Great. So now let's actually, you know, uh, get back to our amplifier. So, so this are uh, yeah, this are amplifier, hmm? our first candidate. And again, remember uh, this this the structure we sort of analyzed it and we convinced ourselves that the gain is this much. Hmm? But when we went from here to here, we made some changes, right? So. Plus, see, uh, visually, if I look at this circuit and this circuit, visually, is there a difference that you can see? Okay, looking at it, how does the circuit look like? Visually, symmetric. But is this symmetric? No. So definitely, I can't argue that whatever happened here is going to happen here, right? So let's actually uh, analyze and understand what's happening here because this is definitely asymmetric. So I can't argue that hey, whatever result I computed here will hold good here. <coughs> So let's uh, look at this fellow in detail. So I'll draw this once. So this is the PMOS stack. I'll assume that for now I am biasing with the ideal current source and here is where I make the diode connection and this is my output, right? So let me also give names, so M1, M2, I'll call this say uh, M3 and M4, okay? So let's start with DC operating point and then see uh, how the bias points are set. For DC, I'll assume that I am feeding a bias voltage VB at the gate. Right? So let's look at DC operating point. Great. So if I call the currents in the two halves of the circuit to be I1 and I2, what will be the values of I1, I2? Hmm? Why, why I1 by 2? Well, I mean, it doesn't matter, right? See, that's an approximation. Remember, in a uh, transistor, the current depends on what voltage is exactly? VGS and it depends on both. So in this transistor, I mean, in this case, what can you say about the VGS? But do you know anything about the VDS? So in practice, you cannot say, right? That's why that, that current mirror argument doesn't exactly hold good. There you're ignoring the effect of VDS, correct? So let's mark this voltage. I'll call this V3 and V4. So I have two voltages V3, V4. How many possible combinations I can have between them relations? I mean, I have two voltages. What can be the possible relations between the two? It's one is smaller, one is greater or equal. So I can have, let us say, uh, smaller than V4, V3 greater than V4. If you know at least what condition is uh, the actual thing here, we can make some comment. So to start, I'll assume that, uh, you know, V3 is greater than V4. Let's assume this is the case. Now remember, V3 and V4 are the drain voltages for the two NMOS transistors. So I am assuming that the drain voltage of the left side NMOS transistor is greater than the corresponding drain voltage on the right side transistor. So which means among I1, I2, which will be greater? I? One will be greater? because VDS is greater for the transistor M1. This is from the NMOS point of view. Now what can you say about the, uh, if this current is I1, what can you say about the current flowing here? That is also I1, right? This entire current has to flow there, there is no other escape. Similarly, what can you say about this current? I am assuming, I am making, assum making an assumption that V3 is greater than V4. Ah, that I understand. Yeah. Uh, the second part, why, why the current I1 is greater than I1? Okay, uh, why is it greater than, why can we make this statement? <laughs> Others, huh? <laughs> 1 plus lambda VDS, so? <laughs> current depends on VDS also. Higher the VDS, higher the current for NMOS. Is that clear? 
so we just uh, made a remark that the pmos currents are also the same i1 i2 now note that the v3 v4 are not only the drain voltage for the nmos transistors but also for pmos transistor now for a pmos transistor remember the current depends on source to drain voltage so if the drain voltage is higher will the current be smaller or larger smaller if the drain voltage is higher the sd will reduce current will also so here i am assuming that v3 is greater than v4 so this drain voltage is higher so for the pmos transistor which current will be higher right so this automatically says that for me i1 is smaller than i2 this is from the pmos point of view so obviously there is a contradiction so similarly i'll get a contradiction if i assume the other case so what is the final consistent solution this should be the final consistent solution okay that's the only possibility for this to have i mean that that's a final solution in which it will settle to so uh, finally i'll know v3 will be equal to v4 which means both currents are equal what will that be equal to i mean both currents are equal what will the value of the currents be yeah why so because ksl some of the two currents must be equal to i know this clear again remember this is an asymmetric circuit so as such you can't make a claim directly but it turns out in this case if the gate voltages are equal the only possible solution is for the drain voltages also to be equal okay so uh, that is v3 v4 uh, now let's look at yeah this common source voltage i'll call it vx now what will this uh, determine the value of vx hmm sorry yeah so what is saying the what is the current flowing in the transistor the value of the current is yeah i not by 2 the current is fixed and who is fixing the current to i not by 2 yeah i mean okay uh, this current is making the current source is fixing the current to i not by 2 if the transistor is in saturation vgs of the transistor is also fixed so which means if i know the gate voltage i can find vx so vx will be the gate voltage vb minus vgs of which transistor yeah it uh, yeah i'll write m1 when it is biased at the current of again notice that the transistors m1 m2 are identical right so which means i can also write it as you know vgs2 at a current i not by 2 both are equal right? so if it's not already apparent i'll just make it here m1 and m2 are identical and so are m3 m4 okay so instead of saying it's vgs of m1 i can as well say it's vgs of m2 doesn't matter okay so that sets uh, this voltage now what about the drain voltage i know the v3 v4 voltages are equal but what will determine the values of these voltages let's look at v3 what do you think is determining the value of v3 gate of m3 and how is the gate voltage is getting fixed here yeah remember once again the current flowing through the pmos transistor is fixed to i not by 2 so what kind of feedback we have here i mean what kind of biasing we are doing for this transistor the constant current biasing by uh, you know sensing at the drain feeding to the gate so which means the vgs is fixed so if i call the vgs or vsg to be some vsg3 what is uh, the gate voltage now this is the vdd vdd minus vsg of the transistor m3 at a current of okay. so once this voltage is fixed v v4 will also follow the same because that's the you no know, consistent solution you can have. 
Is this clear? So right here we can make one important uh, observation. See the circuit, as such, it is symmetric or asymmetric. 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 But what you recognize is, as long as you feed common mode or equal excitation at the gates, what can you say about the drain voltage? So if these two voltages are same, is the circuit now symmetric or asymmetric? So that is something I will just make it a remark, we will follow it up later again. So as long as I apply common mode signals, by common mode signals I mean the same voltage is applied to both the gates, if that is the case, this circuit becomes symmetric. 